Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic, let's do it. What's the creepiest town in the United States in your opinion? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I was once driving on Highway 58 late at night outside Barstow and stopped on the side of the road to pee and let my dog pee. While we were out of the car, a disheveled-looking man with long hair and a beard suddenly appeared out of nowhere, walking toward us quite quickly. He didn't say anything, just had his super creepy stare. I grabbed the pup and threw the two of us back in the car, managing to start the car and pull away just as he reached the rear door. It was effing terrifying and too creepy an experience in my life. The motto of the town is a town too tough to die. A person told me a story about a time they stopped there on a cross-country motorcycle trip. When they parked, they could see people peeking around the corners of the buildings. Shortly after, a woman in an old, dirty wedding dress came around a building, pushing an old Victorian baby stroller. There wasn't a baby in the stroller. It was a toy baby. There are trees growing out of buildings. The main street is an out-of-place, super-wide brick road for herding cattle through the town back in the way back times for such a small town of nothing in the middle of nothing it was for a short time one of the world's busiest cattle shipping towns trona california hands down for the isolation ruin and inhospitable environment i've already been through tiny towns in wyoming and the south and troma still takes the cake it started as a company town in the early 1900s in a far isolated corner of the Mojave Desert. All that exists is a chemical plant that processes borax. It's old and rusty, and it stinks. It looks like the hills have eyes and fall out New Vegas. Only like 1,500 people live there, and most houses are burned or torn down. It's miserably hot and incredibly isolated, as it's three hours away from any large metropolitan area like Bakersfield. The drive there is through a vast, empty, infinite desert with no cell phone signal. If something happened to you there, nobody would ever know. With that said, it feels rewarding and really cool to cross that whole landscape. Colorado City, Arizona, a town founded by and mostly made up of the members of the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a fundy breakoff cult of Mormons who are all about polygamy and marrying young teenage girls to old men, giant families, and dressing like extras from Little House on the Prairie. What an adventure it was driving through that town. Medical Lake, Washington. It's a small, eerily quiet little town on the edge of a strange lake that's not the right color. It's prone to fog, so visibility is often poor, so driving around, stuff just looms out of the fog at you. And boy, does it have creepy shit that can really loom. First, there's the abandoned prison. Just an old-school cement prison with razor wire fences, too many dark windows, and a creepy habit of one of every and one a while being on. Some people think it's because it's haunted, but actually it's used for some training and occasional movies, so it's still got power, and sometimes people leave a light on. Next... It's a huge F-off gothic sanitarium built in 1889 that's now the core of Eastern State Hospital, the state psych ward. And when I say huge, the thing is almost a half a mile long. Its windows are tinted dark. There are several buildings on campus, but there's tunnels between them. So when you drive up, you often see cars but no people. Inside, the tile floors and hard walls are prone to echoes, and it's extremely quiet. So, you walk down an extremely long corridor, no one inside, no sound but your echoing footsteps making it sound like there are more people around than there really are. Then, you occasionally hear a distant scream. Then there's the room where they did the lobotomies. It's entirely tiled with huge sinks with uncomfortably large drains. The ceiling is domed with lights all focused on a spot in the center of the room. 
there is no chair there anymore. It was removed, but the lugs in the floor that it is bolted to are still there, along with drains. When you talk to someone from basically anywhere in this room, you can't tell where their voice is coming from. It sounds like they're right behind you everywhere. This now a shared office space. I don't envy those guys, but that's not the creepiest. There is the rundown cemetery. If you look at the greaves, most of them don't have names, just numbers. There's the abandoned extra wards that are pretty much only used for horror movie sets. Then there's the creepiest of all. The place even the staff at the campus try not to go. The abandoned primate research center. I didn't go in there. But the staff said it just feels like horrible things happen there. It feels evil. The claw marks on the walls are haunting. It's like the whole town is straight out of a Stephen King book, but exaggerated to unbelievable levels. A few years ago, I got lost in rural Missouri, super lost, like back county roads lost. So I got directions from a gas station where the worker is super pissed I won't buy his overpriced map. So he gives me directions that includes going down this road to this other road to get to the highway to get to the interstate. So I go down this back road and end up in this town. It's like 2 p.m. and completely dead. Not a single person around. Mostly older houses, run down downtown, and new post office, that kind of thing. And I'm suddenly filled with dread, like Stephen King dread. There's trash blowing everywhere, and there's just nobody. I drive by the library, and it's pretty much abandoned. There are oversized books in the window, and they're completely swollen from, like, water. So I make it out of town, keep heading on my way, and make it safe to my new destination. Later on, I Google the town, and it's insane. In a town that size, it's full of gruesome murders. One woman murdering another pregnant woman to get the baby, a guy terrorizing the entire town to the point where they just all kill him in the street. Murders from the 1800s. That kind of thing. It's called Skidmore, Missouri, and it's creeped me out more than any other place on three continents I've been on. I grew up in the poorest town in America, Littleton, West Virginia. It's not even incorporated anymore and has literally been articled on Google as the poorest, most depressing place in America, and most definitely in Appalachia. My parents moved us there when I was about three out of the city in Pittsburgh when a flood destroyed the whole street of houses we lived on. The city bought it out to put a trolley track through. My parents were off with the wind. I think at the time my parents thought we were going to move to the country and it was going to be peaceful and quiet and we could start over. Between the opiate epidemic, the poverty levels, and the reality of living in such a rural area with limited access to close jobs and stores was far different. I wouldn't change it now that I've grown, but I definitely saw some things that fit the Appalachian uneducated narrative, trauma and bad parenting, etc. However, though, I also met many people who are incredibly kind, well-educated, well-rounded human beings, and I do not think that the stereotype is fair. A lot of people hear a person is from West Virginia and immediately assume that they're uneducated, don't wear shoes, are inbred living in a shack with no electricity. Sadly, not true at all, and all of those things can be relevant in other places across the world. But Littleton, West Virginia definitely is a wasteful black hole of a place, and not a pleasant place to grow up by any means. My hometown in Perry, Florida, where they had a spat of cross burning a few years ago, a small race ride at the high school, and the black population, which lives nearly fully segregated across the literal train tracks in a part of town called Brooklyn, by the white part of town, at one point were listening in on the police's open broadcasting through scanners, ambushing them with crowbars and two by fours, then following the police home and terrorizing the officers' families to which the police would respond by doing the same thing in reverse with ski masks on by looking up the suspect's homes through the databases. No clue who started it. And it's such a small town, 
you'd have to be from there to have heard about any of this business. There's this spat of violence going on right now, where white teenagers are going around randomly firing shotguns and hunting rifles through the windows of people's vehicles, even when they're occupied. And the local police won't even bother trying to find the bullets to prove there was a shooting. My sister-in-law got her truck shot up about six times not too long ago by these kids while we were taking care of selling their old home. And the cops told her to stop running into light poles. It's been over 30 years since I was born there. And the rule, so long as it isn't a cop, you can get away with murder here, is still so damn true. My dad and stepmom are both from Colorado. My dad grew up in Golden and my stepmom in Gold Hill. We're going to my stepmom's old stomping grounds to meet up with some friends for dinner. Oh, let's take a shortcut. It'll be fun, my stepmom said. Okay, fine. Things got weird when the roads turned to dirt. Okay, no problem. Things got even weirder when the roads started giving out old rain ruts that were naturally drilled into the road. My dad was an ace for steering the little rental car around the massive ditches in the middle of the road. Shadows began to form among the unkept canopy of trees. It might have been days or months since someone drove these roads. Then all of a sudden, a clearing appeared out of nowhere and what seemed like our first glimpse of civilization. Oh, I was wrong. We came upon a very small village. The next few minutes can only be described from the movie Deliverance. People sitting out in front of their house, cars broken down on the side of the road, windows, shutters being held together by a rusty coat hanger, gently slapped an odd rhythmic beat as our little rental car sailed through the dusty streets. You could feel about a dozen and a half eyes gaze upon you from their deck swings. I think they want our teeth my dad jokingly said to break the eeriness. From out of nowhere, a pack of wild dogs began barking while circling our car. I even think there was a dude sitting out front with a guitar. Dad calmly piloted the car past the last broken down car, and we slowly drove out of town. We took a different way back that time. Social Hill, Arkansas it is very hilly, yes, and beautiful. It is not social. You get off the highway and you go a long way through the woods and end up at a dead end with a long driveway leading to a trailer and a bunch of blonde-haired kids who look at you like they want to eat you. You smile or say hello and they continue to stare at you and you suddenly realize that you should have realized as soon as you pulled up to the dead end that you are probably in danger. You turn around and pass the highway entrance and go five miles through beautiful landscape with nothing but an odd trailer here and there and two freshly dead dogs on the side of the road. Why oh why did we get off the interstate there? I told him there were no signs for food, phone, gas, or lodging. Gary, Indiana. It's like an atom bomb went off in certain parts. The parts where people still live look run down, but that wasn't the worst. It was the collapsed abandoned buildings, the burned out houses that were never torn down or boarded up. Sometimes you'd be driving down the block and a house collapsed from a fire or neglect. And the rubbish was sitting in between other houses, which were half the time abandoned themselves. Weird seeing a roof on top of a collapsed pile of rubble and wood in between houses. Lots of empty lots and unusable roads. As far as I could tell, there was next to no snow or ice removal for the roads, or it was severely underfunded and took days to get around to the side streets. This result in the roads accreting a think thin sheet of ice. Obviously, that's dangerous to drive on, but I learned the hard way that parking your car on an otherwise imperceptible incline would mean you were stuck where you were parked. I parked near the curb, and you know how the roads are very gently 
almost imperceptibly curved towards the curves, so the water drains to the side. That little curve was enough that my car barely made it out of there after parking on the curb. One of the downtown areas was a large building, former commercial district. Large three-lane road on each side, surprisingly well-maintained, and ran through this abandoned district. The buildings were in ruin, caved in walls and one entrance, I distinctly remember having a mountain of debris blocking a busted entrance. Looked like a ceiling caved in, perhaps. That one instance my dad and I were quietly observing, and he continued, this is the asshole of the world. I laughed, but also felt bad about this place. I've been through quite a few towns since then by myself, but the place is sketchy as F, and it also smells bad in certain parts, thanks to the steel plants nearby. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend. On a cross-country motorcycle trip, I ended up taking a dirt road through the Appalachian Mountains and getting temporarily lost. I ended up coming upon a tiny mountain village somewhere on the West Virginia-Virginia border. The village had maybe ten houses, all of which looked like a hundred years old sheds, completely ramshackle and falling apart with weeds and rusting junk all around the houses. I puttered through the village to a T intersection and took one of the two road choices. What was really strange is that the entire village was silent. I didn't see a single person as I slowly rode through the village. The road I took ended a few hundred yards from the intersection at the edge of the village. The road just ended at a tree line of a forest, strange. So I turned around and headed back toward the T-junction, the center of the village, to take the other road. I then noticed that dozens of other people had appeared. They were all standing perfectly still on their porches and doorways and among the junk in their front yards and staring at me. Every single person was black, the only black village I saw in Appalachia. They wore stereotypically hillbilly clothes like you'd see on TV show Hee Haw in the 70s, tattered, torn, and filthy. I slowly puttered to the T-intersection at the center of the village and realized that I was surrounded on all sides by these black hillbillies staring at me, completely motionless, with the exception of their heads moving to continue to stare at me as I slowly rode past them. My hair stood on end. I made the turn without stopping. I had a feeling that I'd never be found again if I stalled out and couldn't get the bike started again for some reason. They all had blank facial expressions. They didn't exactly look mean, but not one of them looked friendly either. And every single one of them was just intensely staring at me. I hauled ass out of there as fast as I could. I traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles through backcountry roads and dirt roads in Appalachia. I never saw anything like this strange village filled with what looked like black hillbilly zombies. Strange. Castroville, California. My boyfriend and I were road tripping from Southern California up through Washington. We rented a van from Escape Vans that had a bed, sink, and mini fridge. We didn't even stop planned or where to stay most of the time, so one night, as it was getting late, decided to stop in this small town to find a neighborhood and sleep. Once we found a decent place, we set up the bed and laid down. This was around 10 p.m. Not 20 minutes later, we see lights from a car pulling up behind us. A minute later, I looked out the window and from behind the curtains to tell my boyfriend another car had pulled up alongside us. He immediately jumped into the front seat and started the car. As he was doing so, another car turned the corner and was trying to park right in front of us blocking us in. We noped the F out of there. Sketchiest and most heart-pounding situation I've ever been in. Not sure where, but their intent was, but it wasn't going to be good. 